what what comes to mind when you think of steampunk? Well, to me, what comes to mind is movies like Mad Max Fury Road, for example. You seen that movie? Very post-apocalyptic, eh? But what are they doing? Well, it seems that they are makeshifting things with the world that was destroyed, all of their stuff, all their belongings. Very steampunky, like, right? Very steampunky. Like video games, for example, like Fallout. I think these are good places to gather information and good ideas about what we're looking at here because we see the same thing in real life. Here's an example of a steampunk era vehicle. However, this one here is a mystery. I think this is just straight up old world. But what was steampunk? I think it existed. It already came through. I mean, you think steampunk, you think maybe late 1800s. 1890s or something like that, all the way up to 1880s, 1870s even, all the way up to like the 1930s, 40s. You think of steampunk, right? Well, I think it's very much so what we are shown in the movies and the games, but just not to the ex same extreme level that it may have been directly after the event. Now, this here is Jay Leno's vehicle. It's a white steam car, and it's a custom model. It was made custom. It's not one of the, like, the... The white, they have model cars too. They have a 20, a 30, a 40. But this one's a custom model. This was this would have cost you more than a Rolls Royce in 1907. 1907. Now, does, it, does this make sense that a 1907 vehicle, I don't care how good a condition it was kept in, should be still running in perfect condition, should never have had its engine opened up before, should never have had the boiler opened up before or the steam generator opened up before, because this vehicle hasn't. And it works and runs flawlessly. Flawlessly. The leather, the upholstery, everything but the red paint is all original. The wood wheels, the master craft wood wheels. Give me a break. So we're with our friend Dennis and Jay Leno, and they're going to show us the business with this vehicle. And he hates when Dennis drives. He, Dennis knows. He knows that. Give me a break. He's always, he's always a wreck. He's always a wreck when he drives. So in this one, Dennis does not get to drive this vehicle because this is one of Jay's babies here. This is a this is a charm. Look at the steampunk. Look at the steampunk going on here, baby. Brass and copper. Brass, and these are copper, he said. And these are brass. Everything else is brass. It's all original. Even this original, the trim, original. And it's perfect still for the most part. There's a bit of a little thing, a little bit rust right there but that's it the wood in here is still original he says and so you got the steampunk gauges and all sorts of happy-go-lucky stuff going on here very simple but very advanced to be jumping off a horse and wagon into something like this eh? very very much so guess what this is a two-cylinder okay this is a two-cylinder um, com uh, compound engine which is not common in these. This has a transmission, a high and a low gear, and it's a compound engine. So that means it has a high and a low compression piston. It's two cylinder. It has an automatic thermostat right here. It's an automatic thermostat. It has something called a flow motor, which regulates automatically regulates steam pressure, fuel pressure to keep the steam pressure constant and and um, balanced. You give me a break. We're jumping off the horse and wagon to automatic thermostats and, and flow motors with, that, that, that automatically regulate pressure and all sorts of things. A automatic thermostats that regulate things on their own. You, you buy that? You buy that, really. And you think this is a wagon cart stuffed on top of a, with, with an engine, right? Or, or, you know, give me a break. No, it's not. See the curves? Oh, you'll see in a moment here the design of this butte. There's a, look at the reduction gear here and all this work going on in the transmission. Back to the rear end. The brakes. Holy smokes, looks brand new still. And this is all original. Okay, made by White. They make, do you know what they make? What else do they make but cars, besides cars? They make sewing machines, the most elaborate sewing machines, just as elaborate as these vehicles. Look at these rounded doors. You think this was a wagon car day with an engine stuck in it? No, it's not. No, it's not. The steampunk. No, no, it's not. This cost more than a Rolls Royce in its day, he said. That's what Jay says. This would have cost him more than a Rolls Royce, which in 1907 would have been, say, about uh, thirty-five to four thousand dollars, thirty-five hundred to four thousand. And this would have been more. I don't know how much. And it, it still works 
flawlessly. Everything on it's original, the metal, original, and it does not rust. Now, somebody asked me in the comments, what do you mean their metal doesn't rust? What I mean is that their metal doesn't rust. That's what I meant. I meant it flat out as I said it. Now, what I mean is that we find old world metals, um, and they're either iron-based or copper-based, and they develop a very, very fine patina, which then actually hardens it on the metal and protects it. It protects the metal. And this is a very intelligently thought design. And so iron-based metals turn orangey red, but it's not really rust. It's not structural. It's not structural rust damage. We don't see that in their metals is what I'm saying with all the metal I find in the old world in the ruins. What I'm saying is what I meant by that is that all we see is surface patina because that's what their metal does. And that seems to have been a purposeful thing. They used it for, they used it in ornamentation. The copper based metals that would have a, develop a green patina, they would be used uh, in ornamentation as well as um, iron as well. If they wanted an orange look for an ornamental value of some sort, they would use these metals because of their patina that they would develop. So that's what I mean. It's not really rust. No, it looks like rust, but it's not. It's patina and it's, it's actually protecting the metal is why it's still perfect. That is what I meant, if that clears it up. Look at this brass collar here. I mean, this is this is no joke. Brass handles, all of it original, except the red paint and the black paint here. But the trim and everything is all, except for the, not this trim, but the the brass trim and all that is all original. Look how fancy the, these seats are. The upholstery, the leather is all original. So let's watch the process of this thing. And here's the, that's the original boiler, or steam generator, they call them in this vehicle. It's a little bit different. It's a steam generator, but it's a boiler. That's the boiler. Here's the the pilot, and we can look down. Here we go. <clears throat> the rest of the pilots going left to right, and look how look at this. Look at how beautiful this this all is. Look at how this this curves up and bends back this way to send the wire this way so perfectly. It's all custom designed and perfect, and these are like brass um, tubing and, and copper tubing as well. And it's just a, give me a break. These little spindly horns, like holy smokes, eh? With these steampunk controls everywhere. And I'm, we're going to go over this a bit here. This one's copper, he said, and the rest are brass. You got all types of valves on the ground. They're all brass valves and whistles and steam valves. And it's just, a, and he's saying, I'm scared. Of, and Denny here is always, oh, I'm scared of steam. You know, they're, they're trying to get you to, and I'm sure Jay, he wouldn't do this if he didn't have to, but, um, but then, you know, they got to throw in the idea that, oh, steam scares me. It's, it's like hot and there's fires and, you know, and it's dangerous stuff. You know, I'm, I'm always so scared, you know. And Jay said, watch this. You're with a fucking match, baby. All you need is a match, you know, and, and watch this. He's even got the antique matches, a real antique matches, he said. And uh, he's going to light this this sucker up, baby. He's going to light this puppy up. These fancy doors and all these tr this trim here. And you think it's a wagon cart with an engine on it, eh? You think it's a wagon cart with an engine on it, eh? Costs more than a Rolls Royce, eh? Give me a break. Wake up. You don't know what you're talking about. You don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> Give me a break. You know, we're looking at things with seriousness now, you know. So here's what happens. So he's got the thing. He's lighting the pilot here and uh, he burns his finger. God dang nabbit, you know, and he burns his finger. Dad gummit. And then he's over here. He's like, I gotta light another one. And um, we're good. Oh, a little fire here. A little bit of a fire. Okay, no big deal. No big deal. He said, oh, well, now what? Is what Dennis says here. And Jay said, well, this is when you would go grab a cup of coffee, you know? And, uh, and, and Denny here suggests, oh, you can, you can even roast a marshmallow. Hey, you can even roast a marshmallow. And that wouldn't be a good idea. You lose your mustache, baby. You got to guard that mustache. We already know about that. So he has to turn up the pilot here a bit more. And uh, yeah, he said, again, you can go have a, a coffee here and go, go have a smoke. And these people had time. And you think in 1907, in the turn of the century, they had time to be doing this, really? And they designed things that they would have to be taking this much time for. During times of war and an industrial boom, this is what they wanted to do. And you're going to say, well, no, it's the lazy elites. Uh, do it. And look at the rounded edges. You can't get cut on any of this, this vehicle. No matter where you rest your hand, every corner is rounded over. Nothing is sharp. Nothing is sharp on purpose. And you can't get cut anywhere. Nothing. It's just a perfect vehicle. Perfect. 
So we're getting back to it here. And uh, he's got his hand on the, he's got his hand on the extinguisher pressure. Give me a break. He's always so scared of it. And then, of course, I'm sure Jay didn't want to do this, but he had to. So he threw a little gas, a little extra gas in there, just to light a little fire. Now we got a fire out of control. He's blowing it out with the with the air hose. He's blowing it out. Okay, it's good. Oh, it blew. Caught back on fire again. Damn it. He blows it out. He blows. Oh, now he blew the damn pilot out. Oh shit. And he's laughing. Then he's laughing. Oh, you blew the pilot out. You dildo. And um, now Jay's over here. And then uh, his mustache, he's guarding his mustache. Good work on the mustache. That's good work. That's good work. But anywho, so he's like, get the matches back out, the antique matches. He's lighting the damn thing up again. Okay, so now it's lit. Now he's going to check the levels here. He's got this perfect little bar here to hang on to, just at the right spot, so he can reach right there. And we're in reach, too. In reach. It's all perfectly designed. So he can go um, service these two oil drain plugs in the crankcase. There's one in the front part of the, crank, the crankcase and one in the rear part of the crankcase. Very interesting. And guess what type of oil is in there? 600 weight. Watch this stuff come out. Thick as molasses, baby. He's spinning the drain plug and look at this. It came out like like molasses. Thick. I can't, it came in slow motion, baby. It was w weird. So again, compound engine, two pistons, uh, high compression, low compress compression piston. Very, very intelligent design. It's perfect. It's dead silent. And you're talking horse and a wagon, and they're jumping into this type of high technology with automatic regulators and so on and so forth. The damn thing is dead silent. It has leaf spring suspension. And look at none of the metal is rusting. You see any rust here? No. No, no, no. I don't care if it was inside. I don't care if it was inside. I don't care. It don't matter if this thing is been built to last and to run and this thing was run there's evidence of this thing being run and used in its day jay was saying how it went through a few different families and it was driven it was actually driven look at the brass work here on the headlights like that's necessary during right before world war one eh? and the industrial boom eh? and look at the rounded corners everywhere you can't get cut on anything here you touch anything with your hand you rest up on anything you won't get cut baby engine and car and all between all the cuts here and all the seams you don't get cut on anything here nothing it's just a perfect vehicle <clears throat> so we're checking it out we're getting it started up and look at this it has a condenser so what does that mean it has no exhaust like the stanley steamers that throw a bunch of exhaust out the rear end or steam it's just clean water vapor but steam but much of white steam you know this does not it recirculates the steam brings it back up to the top here runs it down the condenser, condenses it down to what? Water, steam back to water. So it can be recirculated and reused, and the water can be keep being used and made to steam. Keep being used and made to steam. On a full tank here, you get 60 miles on this sucker, and it can move to instant torque, very fast, immediate, maybe upwards of uh, 60, 70 miles an hour. Uh, this thing here, oh, that's the automatic uh, the thermostat. It's an automatic thermostat. Automatic. In 1907, we're jumping off of the wagon into this type of technology, eh? 1907. Yes. And guess what? This is 100 years after steam cars have been on the road, so they say. Steam cars have already been on the road for 100 years in London at this point. And this is high technology. Um, so what, what, what are we seeing here? Steampunk era technology? I think we are. I think this is real steampunk right here. I mean, let's take a look at the controls here. So he's pointing down at the flow motor. It's got a flow motor that automatically regulates it automatically, like the thermostat automatically regulates um, the pressure or the, the heat. The, the heat. Um, we have a a flow motor, and it regulates steam pressure and fuel pressure. So here's a gauge for um, pressure right here. And uh, or for water, and then you have this over here. These three gauges. We're gonna look at those here in a moment. So you have the steam pressure gauge here. That tells you steam pressure. You want this basically to be like leveled out, like turned all the way over and level. I think we'll see in a moment here. The one that says air here, that one is for fuel pressure. So the one next to that would be fuel pressure. The one on the bottom is always is always fire. There's a third gauge he's pointing at there. That's that's the fire gauge right there on the bottom. And so this is what you want them to look. So he's filling up with water. So this tells so this one here will teeter. This gauge here will teeter. And you likely want that in the middle as well. 
and, and that one will teeter kind of a little bit, and that's your flame teetering. That tells you you got your flames on or off. If it goes down to zero, you got no flame. And then you might not have any brakes. So these are very woke vehicles. You have to be woke to drive it. You have a you have two steering wheels or two wheels that you're hanging on to. One's the throttle, one's the steering. And you have to be woke, baby. You have to know how this stuff works. You have to be smart, you know? This is not stupid. 1907, early time period folks coming up with this type of stuff. This is folks who have been around for a while. And who have time to do stuff because they they have the intelligence to be able to do so. And to make that happen, baby. So he's filled up with water. And it's just a gorgeous. Everything is so beautiful. It's the old style hacks here. These big broad old style hacks. I love those. You can't strip those as easy. Not not one bit. So here's the wizard, the steam wizard. That's what they call him there, actually. They call him the steam wizard. He's hilarious. He's um he's a genius. And he knows everything about all the steam engines that Jay that Jay Leno owns here. And he owns a lot of steam technology, Jay, Jay Leno. Back here, this big this big flywheel, that's for a nine and what they say is an 1866 Lincoln era steam engine, which he has back there. And it's impressive. There it is back there. He's got all sorts of steam engines everywhere and steam cars. Tons of them. Not tons, but dozens. So so this is funny here. So he's grabbing the dam. So now we're grabbing the dam. Extinguisher again, this extinguisher pressure, and he's laughing. He thinks it's so funny, you know? And Jay's saying, what, put that down. What the hell are you doing? You gotta be kidding me. He says, put that down. And he puts it down, and he's laughing. You know, well, you know what? He's thinking, hey, hey, you know what? I gotta guard this mustache. I gotta guard this mustache. This is important, you know? This could go awry. And he's, he's, saying, he's saying stuff like that, you know, and folks, and he's giving us a lesson about the mustache. Good work on the mustache, okay? We get it, Denny. We get it. You've done good work. So he's going to keep his hand here on the pressure, just in case. He's going to stay near it. He's very nervous. And Jay is lighting this sucker up now. So the steam wizard here is going to help him out. He's always he's always there in the shop. He works in the Jay's shop here, the steam wizard. And he knows all this stuff, like the back of his hand. It's like, who is this guy? Man, give me a break. So the, the, reg, the um, gauges here are rising. So what I was saying was, you're going to likely want these two leveled out. That's your steam pressure. This is your fire. And this one will kind of teeter a little bit. And then this one here is your fuel. You're going to be raising the fuel up. You're going to be raising it this way um, as they're starting it up and warming it up. They're going to be raising the fuel pressure. And it's making all sorts of noises. And uh, and the wizard's getting nervous. He's never done that before. Yeah, so, but he knows everything. Who is this guy? How long have you been around here, buddy? I don't get how you know so much about these steam engines. I don't get it. This guy's here back here machining parts in the CNC machine. Special um, custom parts for these steam engines and these vehicles. He knows everything about them. How? How? I guess. Big money. That's why he's been around this stuff. So ridiculous. And um, so the gauges are going up. They're kind of wonky right now. That's probably why it's making noise. So he's going to grab the. He's going to grab the. Um, um, the pressure here, and then and then yeah, he's saying, "Oh, the fire's over here, you dildo." And and Jay's like, cut it out, cut, cut it out. So he's like, I'm going to start this bad boy up. So he's going to get in here. The steam wizard's over here helping. And Jay's grabbing the controls. And the steam wizard, he's like, no, 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 no. I got this. I got this. He's grabbing the controls. He's yanking, throwing these levers down really fast. It was hilarious. He knows what he's, he's like, exactly what he's doing. And so does Jay. And Jay's like, I got it. I got it. Just back up. I got it. None of a bitch. I, I got this. And the steam wizard's like, oh, all right, whatever, whatever. And Jay's like, damn, this damn thing's still, what's going on here? And the steam wizard's, the steam wizard's looking here, steam wizard's looking. And he goes back over here, and Jay's like, I got it, I got this. They both know this stuff very well, so it still won't start. And now Denny sits down. Denny sits down, he's like, oh, it's getting funny here. So having some trouble here. And then the steam wizard's like, oh, you're the dildo, Jay. You forgot the, you forgot the valve, you forgot the pilot valve, you dummy. <laughs> so we get the pilot valve going, he turn the gas up, and... Away we go. Now, Jay's over here. Well, you forgot this one. You pull yank on that lever. You forgot this one, you dildo. So <clears throat> now we have, now, like I said, here, this is where you want it. So you want these to be leveled out. This one will teeter a little bit, telling you that the flame is going. You don't want that to go out. And then this here is your fuel pressure, which is they're rising up right now. See how it's raised? It's higher than these ones because they, um, they're they starting it up right now. They're giving it fuel and trying to get this thing warmed up. This is a lot. This is a lot of work, eh? It's a lot of work gone into this for 1907, and for their minds to be coming up with this 
it's high technology, but it just takes time and effort and, you know, maybe a longer lifespan than 1907 folks had, eh? Maybe, maybe some longer days and some more time to be able to, you know, be, leisure, be leisurely about this type of stuff. So the steam widget's down here looking, stuff spraying out, some steam coming out, so that's good. It's dead silent, though. Here's the compound engine. Again, compound engine in here. That's not common. It has a transmission. I mean, you get that. This is this is coming out. So this is feeding. These feed right here. These pipe is piping. It feeds the condenser, not the radiator, not the radiator. So he's going to be monitoring. Dennis is monitoring the heat. He's looking out for fire. He's so nervous about the fire. They gotta, they're they making a big deal about the fire and the danger of the steam. Give me a break. Cut that out. This, these rivets, these brass rivets. On this, on these lights, like that's necessary for 1907. I don't care if this was an elite vehicle. Give me a break. They're all stupid. Okay, they're all stupid. I don't think that way. I don't know. I think that's stupid. But anywho, what a lovely vehicle coming out of the garage here. Just a lovely. And the steam wizard's coming with, baby. The steam wizard's coming with. You better believe it. I'm not gonna leave them hanging like that. And as if that's necessary, these beautiful tail lights in those time periods, like. Did you see that tail light? I have to show you that again. I think we saw it. But anywho, let's continue. We don't got much more here. I just wanted to share this because and just give my thoughts here. I'm thinking we're seeing some repurposing. We're seeing old technologies being utilized in these time periods, early time periods. And the, the designs, I'm saying, do not seem to be ours. They seem to be way too much and like they were already here. And we were working off that stuff, back engineering that stuff, working off the stuff that was already here. Because this right here, this is a prime example of way too much for 1907. Do you understand what I'm saying? So we're driving along. He, he loves it. He's got money. Yes, I know you're having fun with your money. Um, I hope you're doing good with everything else, though, Jay. You, you are. He is a real mechanic. He gets under the car. He gets his hands dirty, baby. He knows how to turn wrench, baby. He can turn wrench. So when he does, he gets dirty, cuts his cell phone. I've seen it. He's a real mechanic. A real mechanic knows one when they see one. It drives straight as an arrow. It drives straight as a mother muffin arrow. It's just a perfect vehicle. So you got the two, you got the throttle down in the middle. That's the smaller wheel is the throttle. Get you going faster. But really all you gotta do is back it off slowly as you're moving along to maintain the same speed because the, the steam pressure and the steam engine are gonna be working harder and getting hotter. And you really gotta back the throttle off more just to maintain pressure. Because if you hold it there, it's going to keep going, getting faster as it gets hotter. And um, then you might have some problems. So here we go again. You got the two wheels. You have to be woke. You got to be woke. To Look at Jay. This is head straight. That's why That's why Daddy don't get to drive this one. This one's too much of a treat. It's all original. Um, the restored ones, Denny gets to drive those ones. But you got the wizard here. With, with, he's laughing about stuff. Denny's freaking out because there's nowhere to hang on to, so he's he's scared up. There really there is nowhere to hang on to, you know. It's you know, it's on you, baby. It's on you if you fall out. That's how they were in the old world. It's on you. These, these people were smart, you know. Their children, their children were around these and in these vehicles, okay, and, and around this dangerous stuff that they had in the old world. So they had to be woke. They had to be woke. The, the children were awake. The people were awake, and that's why we see some of their stuff is rather dangerous. But simple, efficient, and necessary. What they did. Everything. You see here? The outer wheel is the steering wheel. The inner wheel is the throttle. And really, all Jay is doing is slowly backing this off as he's going, maintaining speed to maintain that speed. He just has to back this off a little bit as the pressure builds and as the engine gets hotter. So, and he's hauling ass, baby. Look, you can't even see, you can't even see the... Look at his hauling ass, baby. Look at Jay. He's hauling ass. Look at the mustache. It's flying. Flying. Look, look at this mustache here. Excuse me. I'm getting excited here, but look at the mustache. Look at Jay. Look at Jay. Just having a blast. You know, good for, good for you, Jay. I, I enjoy it. So the mustache. We still have the mustache. Looking like the Monopoly man here. And we're good to go, baby. And we, he's just hauling, too. Maybe 50 or 60 down this 30. We're throwing the hand signals. The wizard's laughing back. He's laughing, you idiot. And he's throwing the hand signals, and the wizard's laughing. The wizard, he's laughing at him. Give me a break. And um, what else? Oh yeah, he comes tearing in here. He almost he almost knocks the fucking roof off, the, the fucking rain cover off when he flies into the garage here. Look at this. 
he hits that that bump right there, and he almost knocks. First, the first of all, the wizard almost flies clear out of the back, the back end. Okay, and uh, Jay is hauling ass. He's hauling ass around this corner so fast. Danny almost, you know, you know, it, it was ridiculous. And um, I think that's it. And Danny didn't get to drive. Oh, he didn't get to, but the, he still got the mustache, but he didn't get to drive. But uh, that's because this is Jay's baby. That's a unit. That's what you call a unit, baby. Jay Leno. This is a, this is a 1907 steam car, white steam car. The model name of it is really the name of the first owner because it was a custom design in 1907. So the, the, the model name is really unknown, and it's it's been named after the first owner. So that's the model name. It's on some of the trim somewhere on it. But anywho, take care, everyone. I love you all. I'll be back with the melt. Don't worry. The melt's coming soon here. Um, it's already begun, rather. I have to edit, and I have to continue where I was. So a lot coming, and it's going to be underground. Underground, baby.